expose a well-bred dog to a bunch of wild birds and what happens? Well, at first he doesn't know what's going on, but he comes into contact with a few of them and he starts to like it. Soon he's actively hunting and seeking for those birds. And, and after a while, he'll start flash pointing them and then he jumps in and he takes the birds out. And then he starts pointing longer and longer and longer. And then assuming that proper gun conditioning is in place, finally the day arrives where you happen to be close enough to one of his points where you can go in, flush the bird, and then kill the bird. So trying it his way, he's been unsuccessful. But now and only now with you, okay, he finally gets what he's been after, which is a bird in his mouth. So he starts to think of the two of you as a team. He points them and then you flush them, okay? So what if we take that same dog and instead of starting them on wild birds, we start them on pen raised birds, poorly flying pen raised birds. Okay, so the process begins much the same. He doesn't know what's going on. You know, he's gonna be just running around. He's gonna come into contact with a few of them and he's gonna to start to like it. He's gonna to start to actively hunt and seek for those birds, okay? And then he's gonna start flash pointing them and then he'll jump in and take the birds out. And he'll start pointing longer and longer. But before you get to the process where you're ready to kill a bird, he's gonna catch it several of those birds, okay? So he learns that you are not needed, that he doesn't need you, that with, with sufficient effort, he's gonna catch a fair num uh, number of those birds on his own. So uh, people say that it takes birds to make a bird dog. Well, that's, that's only partially true. It takes good flying, wild acting birds to make a bird dog. And since so few of us have uh, access to the number of wild birds that would be necessary to start a dog, Okay, what we can do is that we can simulate how a wild bird would, would act with good flying birds and electronic launchers. So let's watch a few uh, dogs as this process unfolds now. Here's an 18 month old dog that's never been hunted. He comes from a breeder that markets the dogs as dual dogs capable of becoming either show or field dogs, but I think the majority are sold as pets. Later we'll see a couple of dogs that come from strictly field trial and hunting lines. And as I said in the intro, all we're doing is simulating what a wild bird would do. If he gets too close to the bird, I launch it and it flies away. And we let it fly away without saying a word. This has got to be between the dog and the bird. He must learn to point without any verbal cues or commands from us because we're not going to be there when he comes in contact with that covey of birds 100 or 200 yards away. Look at me in the background. I'm always watching my dog and I've always got my finger on the launcher's transmitter button. Let's just let it film and let's see what happens when he comes back in the area. He's definitely using his nose. Yeah, I need to head. Here's a poorly timed launch. I should have launched it before I did. He's starting to point for several seconds. This is an early morning workout with frost on the ground, but this was filmed before the next and final segment. When you start working these dogs, remain stationary after the dog points until the dog is holding their birds for 30 seconds or so, because the dog's tendency is to move when you do. After the dog establishes point, any movement from that moment on is cause for you to launch that bird, so don't allow any creeping. Twenty seconds. Yeah. Oh, man. Here's the first of two dogs from Strictly Field Trial and Hunting Lines, and this is her second workout. The first workout consisted of about six birds, none of which were pointed. The process is the same. If she gets too close to the bird, it's going to fly away. I move here only to get a better view for the camera, but as I said earlier, we're to remain stationary until the dog will point for 30 seconds. Thank you. 
up here. She won't let you, but go ahead. You can try. <laughs> Note that this dog has been properly conditioned to gunfire. In fact, her owner has been shooting good flying chucker over her at a local game preserve. Since she's still learning, he always uses his launcher, and if she gets too close or creeps after initially establishing point, he launches and watches his $12 bird fly away, which he'll hunt later with his older broke dog. This is the third workout with this young dog. Let me say a word about launchers and their introduction. Make sure your launcher won't throw the bird more than a few feet in the air. We don't want to startle your dog. And always proof your dog on the launcher in the yard before going to the field. Stake your dog down or have a helper hold its lead while you get 30 feet in front of the dog with the launcher. And when they're watching you, launch a bird or a bumper. And then repeat this at 20 feet and then 10 feet but back up if you get a negative reaction. This is another case of me moving only to get a better view for the camera. Again, we should always remain stationary until the dogs will stand for 30 seconds on point. That's 30 seconds, I can't believe it. No way she'll let me. I was gonna say, no way she'll let me flush. When the dog will hold their birds for 30 seconds or so and it's time to start getting in front of the dog, don't walk right beside and then pass the dog. Instead, you want to sweep wide but be ready to launch that bird because you'll probably entice them to break it first. This dog stands steady to flush, but that's unusual. A quick word about uh, check cord work. I work in three fenced acres, and so you'll notice that I did not use a check cord. I actually prefer it. Uh, it's a little more natural if you don't have to. Uh, but if for control you needed to, you certainly could. Uh, I would suggest that you use a shorter check cord. And if the wind, if the camera is, is you know, kind of the location of the bird and the wind is flowing in my uh, blowing in my face, you don't just check cord the dog directly into it. What you do instead, you kind of check cord the dog perpendicular to uh, the location of the bird and just you know pass if the, if the dog doesn't point the bird you know first pass you know that's fine you just walk past you know 10 or 15 feet come in a few feet and then you check cord back perpendicular and then you just you just keep repeating that uh, getting closer and closer but if you're within five or six feet and the dog has still not made a recognition of the uh, bird then you just flush it now if at any point the dog does recognize the bird and doesn't uh, point flashpoint that's when you launch the bird immediately and after they do point do not hold them on a restrained check cord you've just got to just you know have slack in the line this has got to be their decision okay uh, and a, a common problem that I see with with owners is that when their dog starts to point they become reluctant to uh, prematurely launch that bird they just keep wanting to see one more point and one more point but that's not realistic if you wild bird hunt you know and I don't care how good your dog is Wild birds are going to get bumped, or, or they're just going to just 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 fly, you know, before a, a dog has had an opportunity to point them. So uh, uh, you've got to keep, you know, launching those birds when they don't point them. And we want those dogs to think if they take just one more step, just one more inch, that that bird's going to be going to fly right on out of there. And that's what that's what what keeps that that style, that good style of theirs. So after these young dogs will allow me to go in and flush, and uh, and kill a bird for them. Uh, that's when I like that's where I like to have them when bird season comes in and so there is something that we can do later with older dogs a more structured type of, of training so that when they do point you know that we can insist that they hold those points longer and longer 
but I don't I don't do that until they've had you know one full season of just wild bird hunting you know and if you don't have access to wild birds you know I would just ask that you know you just you use your launchers and good flying birds you know to just go out and have some fun with them but you know we got to keep the training going forward so if they don't do right you have got to flush that bird and you do not reward them by uh, by shooting it and so so that's it I uh, want to thank you for watching and would ask that uh, if you like this uh, please like and subscribe thank you